All right, folks, I'm back again with Ryan Hurst from GMB Fitness, and we're going to jump into another deep dive to get Ryan to unpackage some of the most common issues he sees, but also some tips that's going to help you with your fitness over the long term. So, Ryan, really, really appreciate you jumping on today, mate. How's everything going on your end? It's my pleasure. I always love chatting with you, man. Yeah, things are good. I'm ready to uh, to chat. Yes. Awesome, mate. So, I think what we were talking about, you know, how to undercommit from a consistency standpoint, right? And I think a lot of people, when they start out, they're very keen. They might have been off for a few months, a few weeks, a few years. It's very easy to want to just dive in head first. And it was actually one of the biggest benefits of joining uh, the apprenticeship and learning from you was literally going slower. Right. And getting you know and building an exceptional base with the basics so do you want to i guess explain to people what all that means really and and how you coach and and recommend people approach this absolutely i'm actually going to use an analogy and i want us to think about learning a language and so for example um when we were very very young we didn't think about studying a particular language um we actually had the advantage of our parents or other people working with us in a way that was comprehensible to us. So um, they wouldn't, for example, just give us a novel, um, you know, the old man in the sea at age six and expect us to be able to jump in and read that book. What it was is we were actually using material that was appropriate for our particular level but the cool thing about it was that it was interesting enough to us that we wanted to continue to to read that particular book and chances are that we read that book or had that book read to us numerous times every single night before we went to bed what i'm getting at here is looking at not trying to do something that's so far out of your reach that's so challenging that even though it might seem interesting when you first start it it's so over your head that it is overwhelming the challenge is too difficult for you it's difficult for you to comprehend what you actually need to do and even though it might have felt interested in the beginning, you lose interest very quickly because once again, you have difficulty comprehending what needs to happen in order to help you to be able to compre- uh, to understand what's going on. So this is comprehensible learning. I think this can also be applied to how we view uh, getting into fitness, staying mm, involved in, in the sense that what we're doing is interesting to us, yet not so challenging that it forces additional problems and issues into our life where we eventually lose interest and say, you know what, I I just can't do that. I don't know what I do. I'm just going to do something different. So looking at hopefully having someone that can help you to say, okay, listen, this is a good level for you. Let's have you work on this, but they keep it interestingly interesting enough so that you want to continue doing it. Then using incremental progressions to help you to move forward. Now, likewise, as I mentioned before, you know, rereading that book every day, um, you actually, as a child, it's still interesting enough. You know what's going to happen at the end of the story because you've heard it so many different times. But the thing of it is, is when you hear it again, you the comprehension of that story is deeper. Uh, you 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 know see it on a different level. And I look at this at the basic foundational movements. It's not that we're going back, you know, and dropping down to a level where. It's not going to help us. We can make it challenging by increasing the intensity at which we perform these particular movements. But the fact that it is at a comprehensible level for us, it allows us to view those on a deeper level and make improvements, again, in a way that's going to help us and build from there to be able to read and comprehend harder novels, uh, paragraphs, uh, sentences, and and phrases in our life 
And those phrases are movements, movement variations, um, whether that be actually being able to see and recognize new movement patterns that's going to help us uh, for everything else that we have out there. Yeah, I, I love that. That excuse me, that analogy. First of all, I was smiling because, like, I remember when you were. I, I just what I tell my clients now, and it's what you said. I think it was in the apprenticeship around that time, and it was like, you know, you're doing the bear now, you're doing the push up now. And then you're going to come back into this in a year's time and you're going to be able to access that movement at a completely different level. Yes. And that was a massive, you know, then you never get like, oh, this is the same boring exercise. You're like, oh, wow, yeah. this is a completely new exercise that I'm I'm, I'm seeing now because I can actually access it completely differently. And again, just like language where you might, you know, learn how are you? But you take that concept of what you're doing and you can build off of that in order to create a phrase that's similar yet different because you actually have used that phrase so much in your life. And also that gives opportunities to understand how different phrases might be used, just like these movements. So even though you're coming back to the basic bear, you understand now that, oh, even in the in the beginning, there were so many key points of this that I just tried to you know, I just had to see this broad overview of what was going on. Now you can really focus in on key points of its scapular elevation, focusing on pushing the hips higher in order to elongate the legs to create better tension throughout the body. Like these other things happen. So it's not that you're dropping down to the basic level. It's, it's, you're coming into that movement again on a higher level of understanding that's going to allow you to operate um, with more intelligence as you're performing that particular movement yeah and kind of like the book analogy as well like it's a kid's novel and then you're like oh there's a deeper adult meaning to that story that now absolutely. i understand as an adult absolutely cool. absolutely yeah and this is something of course i mean i'm just trying to look at it that way because i think another thing that happens for a lot of us is we look at movement and simply see it as fitness rather than seeing beyond what it can be and say, oh, I have to work out or I have to do this. But but the thing about this in the very beginning, as you mentioned, in order to uh, create good habits and look at performing these movements and not getting bored with it is moving beyond thinking that it is fitness. It is actually practicing skills and getting better at this like we would do with anything else in our life. And the more that we can practice this and look at things in a new way, creating uniqueness each time that we inter interact with that thing allows us to continue to do the thing, show up on the days when we don't feel like doing it, but actually doing it because we know it's going to be good for us in the long run. Yeah, uh, I didn't I haven't told you this yet, but I'm working with a teacher here in, in Tiamashaura. Yeah. And I've I've been going to classes for like Kizomba Bachata and it was, yeah. you know, it's good, good, but it's 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 in Romanian. It's very <sighs> like I miss you know, I might go back to Ireland, I miss a few weeks, and I feel like I'm it's very hard to progress. Sure. And then so as I started working with her, she's like, No, no, we need to build, you need to learn the basics. I'm like, you know, every go. good coach doesn't matter, <laughs> like yeah. you know, move, movement, language, dance, it's the same. Everyone's Absolutely. saying the same thing who knows what they're talking about, right? But this is exactly so, you know, martial art is is huge in my life. I and I teach four days a week here. I have a class that I teach four days a week. And you know, I do have people that come in that have experience in other in other arts, but you know, I'm like, okay, we're going to start at the basics. And you can see some of them go, huh? But then when we're doing it, you see their eyes light up because they're just like, oh, my goodness. I just realized that having come back to this and the way you're explaining it actually allows me to do these other things, not only better, but see movement patterns and things that I didn't see before faster with more efficiency. And so um, it's, it's not to say that we should only just do the basics, but again, like anything, if your foundation isn't solid, you're not going to be able to build anything on top of that that's going to hold. And so rather than just chasing things down the road, making sure that 
the principles, the concepts behind those particular things that you want to do are set first. So again, doesn't mean that you can't do those other things and try those, but you need to make a, and understand what is the underlying foundation that makes that thing possible. Focus on that. Then the other things actually happen naturally. Yeah. I have a question for you. Like, why do you, cause it's, it's similar. So basically what this teacher was saying, she was like, you know, the classes, they're teaching you these kind of moves, but you're, yep. you're not learning anything because they're putting moves on top of no foundation. Right. And then you, you don't know how to, like, you've no base, basically. And right. it's very similar in kind of a lot of the fitness as well. They're just like smashing people in a hit class. Exactly. Like, why do you, th why do you think that is? Is it an educational thing on the coach's part or like, why yeah, do you think well, it's, they're, they're missing I think, out? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, We see this in the martial art world. Uh, I actually just, um, on my personal blog, I, I wrote about this recently. Um, last week, the article that I put out was actually about that in how we have people um, who are technique um, collectors. They, they're they trying to collect the next move. Uh, and a lot of this is, is there, there's a few things behind this. One, it could be that some of the people who are now teachers are good at that particular art, whether it be dancing, fitness, martial art, yet don't understand how to teach. And therefore they're teaching the things that they see without having um, the technical understanding of being able to explain things in a way that's gonna allow a person to build upon um, those foundations that we're talking about to reach those techniques faster, exactly what we're talking about. The other thing that we found is when things become a business, novelty is something that people crave. And therefore, some people believe that a new technique should be introduced every single week. And the problem that I have with that is that if a technique is completely random and not related in the scheme of everything, you're simply going to have random techniques and not see how they work together. And so... The process, I believe, is extremely important as a teacher. And so I don't believe it's simply, hey, just get really, really good at what you do and then go teach it. <clears throat> I do think that there should be another component of how to teach, how people learn, um, the different ways people learn, and, and presenting the material in a way that's going to allow the person to, first of all, know what to do because... You know, if you don't know what you don't know, then how are you expected to be able to do something? But it doesn't matter if it's martial art, dance, fitness, teach a person better body awareness of the basics. And it's going to create that good foundation that's going to help you as a teacher to be able to start stacking techniques on top of that. Um, also, techniques to me, looking at simply variations of movements. And um, again, just coming back to the fact that if you are a teacher, learn how to teach. Learn that less is better. And when you teach a particular movement, I'm talking about the actual cues you give as well. Standing in front of the class and showing a particular technique that has 12 steps, explaining that for 15 minutes, and then saying, okay, go try it, is not helping your student at all. Break it down, focus on a single part of that particular technique and the concept behind why you're doing that, then let them go explore. And to me, I found that to be the best way to do it because in this way, every single body is different. Therefore, the way that I do something is going to be different than the way that you do it. And if I say that it has to be this exact same way, well, it's actually never going to be that way. A movement is never the same ever. When you do a bear, Connor, the way that you do it right now is going to be very, it's going to be different than the very next bear you do. That's just how life works. And so, Rather than teach A, B, C, D, look at the concept behind what we're trying to do. What are you trying to get out of this? 
and then have people explore that and find the thing that works for them. That way, they're going to be able to own that movement faster and more efficiently and also have a good understanding of not just how to do the movement, but why, and therefore be able to see relationship and movement patterns in other techniques. And that's what I mean by stacking in terms of that way you can put something on top of that in a more expedient fashion, because again, they do understand the concept behind why they're doing and what they need to do personally in order to help them to perform that particular movement. Lots there to unpack, but this is something, again, that I think about all the time. And, and as I just mentioned, something I'm sharing a lot recently now that I'm writing these articles and, and um, putting those out. When did you start thinking this way, mate? Because, like, I'm guessing as a gymnast growing up, it was precise. Like, you was. need to look this way. It was, but my coach is the one who started doing that. And so, Mark Folger, I had been very, very lucky because I've had coaches that were not okay exactly this way they would they would give me cues to okay for example if you're looking to perform a full twisting back flip there are concepts and things that need to happen in order to make that happen okay for example um when you're twisting in the air if you take your arms out to the side you slow the rotation if you look at figure skating, this is exactly the same. The tighter you can pull your body in close, closer, the tighter you can make your body, the faster you're going to spin. It's physics, okay? These concepts, and then having lift, creating lift, but exactly, I want you to do this exact knee tuck, have your chin exactly in this position. No, this is the things where the concepts come about and you practice. And you figure out what's going to work for you because, as I mentioned, every body is different. I was lucky over the years that I had coaches that would coach me in that way. When it came to judo, my judo coach said, I think that this particular waza technique would match your body type. Let's practice it. They would show me the basics of the movement, and then they would say, go, go figure it out, go work on that. And so in that sense, then it wasn't, okay, you need to have your hand exactly this position, exact, you know, along the ways, there were certain cues that they would throw out at me. Oh, make sure to keep your elbow in or something like that. But it wasn't necessarily A, B, C, D. It was, okay, here's a concept. Here's what you need to focus on getting your hips under your opponent, keeping your chest up having that rotation, pull the elbow across your body. So these certain things, great, but how do you exactly do that? That was something that I had to figure out. Luckily, um, during that time, things were clicking with me. And so then later, as I started teaching other people, it allowed me to see the opportunities in, in the sense that in the beginning, when we teach, we're always going to over teach. That was just how it's going to be. But having seen hundreds and hundreds and up to the thousands of people perform these movements, I realized, oh, it is just about a certain concept. And then letting this person figure out that point first before stacking something on top of it. And so that's why I like to focus on a single cue, pushing the hips up into the air. There's a concept, if you will, and a concept that allows a person to move away from thinking that their hands have to be in a certain position, their shoulders have to be in a certain position. No, by using that cue of pushing the hips up into the air, it actually puts their shoulders into a certain position, their legs, their heels, their arms, that we're striving towards, but I'm not forcing them into thinking that they have to have a certain position to do that. And so once they get that down, then we can say, oh, I would like better scapular elevation happening when you're performing this, but it comes back to that single cue of pushing the hips up into the air. And so now what we're looking at is we're going and looking at the details of that particular movement in depth. But first they have the understanding of what they need to do. And we explain why we do that. Why are we pushing the hips up into the air? Because it's going to create, you know, the position that's going to be more efficient to allow us to perform that movement. So then 
All they have to do is focus on that cue and understand that it's going to help them across the board. Then when they start focusing on, okay, splaying the fingers, uh, what finger do you have facing forward? I notice there's some tension in my elbow. Okay, what if you were to turn your fingers out to the side? Therefore, now we can start looking at individual cues uh, rather than um, these are more micro cues compared to the macro cues um, in movements. Yeah, As you I can love tell, that. I get, like... Yeah, go ahead. No, as you said, I love it. it's like that broad concept or principle. And then this is the main point. Then the person makes it their own for their body. Like it's not, does not be perfectly look like Ryan. And then also the, the why I think is so powerful for people as well. Like this is why you're doing this and it's leading right. to here. That's uh yeah, that's a big one. Um, One thing I'd like you to maybe help, like from, from a coaching standpoint. So, for coaches out there, I think a lot of the issue is around, like, I need to keep things fresh for the clients so they don't get bored. What advice would you give to a coach who's maybe they, they want to start applying this, but they feel maybe stressed about clients leaving or getting bored or so on? Yeah. So the difference between um, a good, uh, you know, a coach and, and, and a great coach is that, you know, a coach is going to give that person what they want, you know? That a person comes to you and they're like, yeah, this is what I want. Cool. Great coach, though, not only gives them what they want, but more importantly, also what they need, maybe without even knowing that that's what they're getting, um, the, the client, the, the student. So, so as a coach and becoming a great coach, when you're able to not only teach them that particular thing, but also help them understand the progress, the benefits that they're getting in that thing at that moment, a person will come back to it. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it can be where, okay, everybody, today we're going to be working push-ups. Like, great. Okay, tomorrow we're going to work push-ups. The next day we're going to work push-ups. This is, of course, you know, just a very broad example. But it's not just a matter of saying push-ups, but letting that person know exactly within that structure or the theme of what they're doing, what the difference is and how it's going to benefit them. So for example, hey, today we're going to focus on um, our elbow position in the push-up. And by doing this, it's actually going to allow us to have a stronger structure in which to push away from. And so the way that we're going to do that, though, today is we're going to focus on the form and doing these as slow as possible. So you do that. And they're like, oh, that was pretty tough. Then the next day you come in and say, hey, everybody, great job on those push-ups. I want to go deeper in looking at the push-up. And so today, because you already have those elbows in, you understand that having those in there, the structure is going to be tighter. We're just going to do one little thing. And I want you to focus on squeezing uh, you know, the butt, your legs, having your feet together as you're performing the push up. And then they do that and they're like, oh my God, you know, coupled with that elbow, that really changes the push up. Then the next day you can say, all right, we're coming back to this push ups. We're going to take that first cue of the elbows in and then we're going to take, you know, having the squeezing of the body. This time, though, what we're going to do is we're going to look at tempo. And so, what I would like for you to do is slowly, slowly lower yourself. I want you to just pause at that bottom portion and then explode up as fast as you possibly can. And so this time what you're doing is you're reframing the way that you look at that particular movement. You're making it unique in the sense that it's still a push-up, but you're reframing the way that a person is viewing that push-up and it becomes a brand new movement, to be honest. And so this is how you can get lots and lots of volume in terms of learning a particular skill, get your person better at performing that and do it in a way where they're learning different variations, even though they're actually doing the same thing. So you're getting them not only what they want, and that's to get stronger, feel like they're getting their workout in. And again, I'm just using a broad example of using a single movement. You, you, you know, every single day is probably not what you want to do. But what I mean is when you come back and you look at that same movement, that's how you can actually do it where, um, you make it unique to that person 
But what you're actually doing is making them so strong and they're teaching their body awareness. You're also helping them to keep them from blowing out their shoulders, improving strength, endurance, and yeah, you know, getting that pump. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, but, but that's how I'm always looking at things for people. And this is what I do in my martial art class as well. You know, the people come in here and we're pretty much doing the same thing every week. But the way that I explain it and how it relates to other things, and I say, look, this is the position you're doing standing, and then we work on that particular movement that they're doing, and then I say, and the same position works when you're on the ground, whether you're on the bottom or the top, and then what's happening is that they're seeing it from a different point of view, even though it's the same thing, it's the same frame that we're working on. I show how it works in these different positions and they go, Oh man, that's awesome. The cool thing about that is that they're, so they're always working on that frame and they know it's going to get stronger. And when they're working on a standing, they know that when they're on the ground, it's going to work there too. So here we have a way where a person can get better, faster, more efficiently by bringing awareness to that position and understanding that that position exists in different ranges so I mean, that's just a martial art example of course and, you know we have the push-up and you could literally do this with any movement out there and yeah um, yeah it's just I, yeah yeah i think that's a really cool uh first of all like being able to you know it's not just like oh we're doing uh oh, push-ups again and it's just right? like you know 30 yeah. seconds do as many as you can and people are just like headbutting the ground and it's just yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> It's, but I think just yeah. the tempo stuff is actually at a check in with a client this week and we're doing clock off back squats, which is clock off tempo is like seven seconds down, right. five seconds yep. at the bottom and one second right. back up. And he said yeah. he, he'd never squatted his body weight on the bar. So I think he's like 70 kilo or 80 kilos. Uh -huh. And he was like, I did my body weight on the bar like last week with the clock off squat. And I was like, and you've never, ever done it at any tempo range. He goes, no, but I just felt so safe and i owned every part of the movement yep. and i think that's yep. really you know what i learned through your techniques as well is just there's no leakages it's just like you own yep. everything when you're doing it absolutely man and that's what it is and that's why i like to be so and i just sorry to keep talking about martial arts but in the class last night that's what i talked about and we we're actually working on a throw and i said and i reframed the way that they look and i said listen we're not going to do a throw we're going to do a takedown and they were like, what's the difference? And I said, well, a throw is where a person is in space and there's no control in being able to determine what's going on in space compared to a takedown where it's so slow and controlled that you could stop at any moment. Therefore, it's safer for both parties. And so I said, by practicing this takedown the way that we're doing this and getting really, really good at that, when it's time to actually throw a person, the person on top is going to know better how to fall out of it. The person who's actually going to be doing the throw has more control. Therefore, more power can be more explosive and actually harder in terms of like power generation and, and making mm -hmm. a huge impact to it later down the road. So same thing with movement. Like what you're just saying is by slowing it down, you're actually looking at where you're weak in those in-between movements. It's going to allow you to shore that up and then you get stronger overall. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Like I think just, uh, again, deconstructing stuff and then telling people like, you're actually doing the first step of this skill. And people are like, whoa, this is like yeah. a handstand. You're like, yeah, yeah, this is like- Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I thought we were just doing a wrist stretch. Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hand gotcha. stand. yeah. <laughs> awesome man that was great mate i think we'll we'll wrap there ryan but for people right. who want to learn about your um your blog with the martial arts where can they find that uh right now it's on a place called juyu kai juyukai.com i know it's a little bit i'm actually probably going to switch this over to my personal blog <laughs> um just to make it easier for everybody um i don't have anything really set up there but you know hey upcoming episodes maybe we can talk about that so yeah cool man and yeah for gmb guys gmb.io to learn more about the whole gmb system yes thanks man awesome dude